So good evening, everyone. I welcome you all on behalf of Team ISMS ICS to this wonderful evening. I am very proud to mention that uh, ISMS ICS have grown a lot in past so many years, and we have twenty four state chapters and fifteen international chapters, along with chapter for women and young ophthalmologists. And uh, we are glad that today is the installation of our sixteenth chapter. that is singapore chapter so uh, i would like to invite dr amulya sahu sir who is founder chairman of ismis ics to speak few words of wisdom so over to you sahu sir so can somebody help to unmute dr sahu and to people must be having some please yeah. Yeah. yes i welcome dr ansu and our esteemed colleagues from singapore eye hospital it is an indeed a proud moment for ISMS ICS to open Singapore chapter. As we all remember, in our mad rush for mastering machine, we totally forgot the man behind the machine. We made machine the center of our attraction and marketing, relegating surgeon to the periphery. Time has come to strike a balance. the idea which started in 2005 has grown into a healthy tree with flowers and fruits every one can see and appreciate our effort is ismis is, is to promote the art and art of cataract surgery msics have succeeded to a great extent providing aesthetic and result in msics comparable to feco and many occasion better than feco let the science and art of cataract surgery coexist let surgeon be the center of marketing let master of cataract surgery become a master in both feco and msics giving birth to a complete cataract surgeon with this i will hand over the mic thank you so much sir thank you for being the pillar of ismis ics now i would like to invite dr jagannath puramani sir who is executive chairman of ismis ics and who is going to take us through the journey of the organization over to you sir yeah good afternoon and welcome <clears throat> all the office bearers of ismis ics and the new office bearers of the singapore chapter of ismis ics dr anshu and our entire team and my dear audience uh, i want to take you through the journey of ismis ics what this organization is about so instead of talking i'll just share a short video about our organization Can you see the video? No, only your. Screen. Not yet, sir. Not only... yet, sir. Your screen is visible. Yeah, just give us. Now, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir. Welcome to International Society of Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgeons. Scleral tunnel incision is a secure incision. There are newer advancements in SICS like 2 mm incision surgery, smart incision surgery. With customization of incisions, the astigmatism can be managed very well. SICS has become a premier surgery now. The International Society of Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgery was launched in 2005 in Mumbai. 
Dr. Amulya Sahu is the founder chairman of the organization and Dr. Jagannath Boramani is the executive chairman of the organization. The first international conference of ISMSICS was organized in 2005 in Beijing, China. The second international conference was held in Malaysia in 2007. This was a three days event with wet lab, live surgeries, and scientific deliberations. This was followed by successful conferences in Indonesia, Sweden, Egypt, Philippines, and South Africa. ISMSICS surgeons were invited to conduct wet lab in Asia Pacific Association of Cataract and Refractive Surgeons Conference in Kuala Lumpur in 2015. Dr. Boramani is the first editor, published many journals of the organization in the past. The organization started holding world conference every two years. The first comprehensive cataract conference, CCC 2015 was held in Pune. The Aravind Eye Care System Organized the second CCC in 2017, in Chennai. This conference witnessed the joining of, Help Me See, with ISMSICS for simulator-based training. An instruction course as well as wet lab were conducted in, WOC 2018, in Barcelona. The ebook, Master's Guideline on SICS was released during this conference. The organization has arranged multiple programs in partnership with various associations. The World Conference CCC 2019 was a three days grand scientific fiesta in Kolkata. The All India Ophthalmological Society started giving ISMSICS two big sessions in every annual conference since 2018. WOC 2020 also gave a session to SICS surgeons. ISMSICS has now chapters in almost all states of India and across many countries in the world. We have started training on SICS simulator in partnership with Help Me See. The internet-based global SICS training program was launched during AIOC 2022. ISMSICS started the publication of journal again in 2022. After the physical launching in Egypt and Bangladesh, during the pandemic chapters were launched in almost 15 countries. The COVID pandemic witnessed almost 50 webinars with massive attendance. ISMSICS has got a women's wing to address specific issues of women surgeons. The Emeritus Society of Ophthalmology organized a two days hands-on training workshop in Dubai in June 2022. The Australia and New Zealand chapter was launched during the annual conference of the Royal Australia and New Zealand College of Ophthalmologists in October 2022. The fourth CCC was organized by PGIMER Chandigarh in November 2022. The fifth CCC will be held in Hyderabad in 2023. Yeah, thank you very much. And I request Dr. Arti to proceed further. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for taking us through the journey of the organization. And we promise you when we'll continue the same. So next, I would like to invite Dr. Barun Nayak, sir, who is president of the uh, organization for a few words of wisdom. Yeah, good evening, good afternoon, friends. Uh, it's a, a really a great privilege that today we are uh, opening a chapter in, uh, in Singapore. So this is uh, the introduction ceremony of that chapter is really welcome. And I'm, I'm really, I'm so happy 
that the organization is now progressing leaps and bounds means virtually every week uh, we hear something new about it and some progress which has been made so it's a uh, all work done by the people sitting and people who are uh, really I means it's a uh, deeply involved with this and committed entirely committed especially dr jagannath puramani and dr amulya sahu so i really salute them and uh, i will not take much time i'll just uh, i'm so happy that this is being done today thank you thank you so much sir next i would like to invite dr parikshit gupte sir who is vice chairman of the organization to speak uh, thank you dr rp i mean singapore is very very special as the crossroads of india and china is one of the most developed centers especially in iter in this part of the globe and all of us at ismis ics are extremely happy and grateful that snec and dr anshu at singapore ophthalmology are joining us in this and we hope to work with them and hope to take sics to greater thank you thank you so much sir uh, i would like to invite dr satanshu mathur sir who is chief coordinator of the organization sir we would like to hear from you as well thank you arti we welcome our friends from singapore in iss msics family you all are welcome here really we, as arti told now we have 16 international chapter and it is showing the popularity of this technique worldwide already we have 24 chapters in india i thank you dr boramani sir dr mundi sau sir for making this technique a work and it given its place in the ophthalmology which it deserves otherwise this technique would have people would have forgotten it so we wish all the best of luck to this singapore chapter and we hope that we organize a good conference there in singapore in future so by this words i welcome all the dignities from the singapore in this family thank you all thank you so much sir next i would like to invite dr deepak mishra sir who is secretary of the organization good evening dear friends uh, i it's really a proud moment for us that we are going to collaborate with our singapore colleague and i hope and wish that the singapore chapter will do <coughs> lots of more things in future in collaboration with ism ics with these words i will thank you and welcome all of you thank you thank you so much sir uh, we have with us a very senior teacher and an excellent speaker dr harsha bhattacharya sir uh, sir we would like to hear from you as well good evening to all it is indeed a great moment and the singapore chapter is going to be uh who is going to be installed today and the our society has really become an international society and the manual small incision cataract surgery i am sure with the patronage of all the all our international partners it will take a lead in the world and it will really do good to mankind with this i conclude thank you thank you so much sir so once again uh, we welcome all of you and uh, i would like to invite dr manik to take over the session from here thanks arti so is my screen visible Yes. 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 Okay. So, good evening, everyone. With this, we commence the installation of the Singapore chapter of ISMS ICS. It is an honor for us to have you all today on this platform, and thank you for taking the time out to join. Uh, many of our members uh, here are from the Singapore National Eye Centre, which is lauded for its clinical and research work, with many of its doctors being uh, among the top two uh, percent scientists of the world. and their surgical prowess pension for research and world class education has made them one of the leading institutes in asia and the world for cataract surgery and it is our honor to be associated with them i had the privilege of visiting snec last year and had the opportunity to work with many of our faculty which have joined us here today 
It was an immense learning experience and not only are they excellent surgeons, but warm and patient teachers. So the Singapore chapter installation of ISMSICS couldn't be at a better time. And I hope that this collaboration and exchange of knowledge will be mutually beneficial to all. Prof. Anshu is the academic vice chair of education and holds numerous chairs at SNEC and Duke University. She is an adjunct assistant professor at the YLL School of Medicine and an adjunct senior clinician investigator at SERI. She is a senior consultant in the cornea and external eye diseases and refractive surgery department, as well as the program director of the fellowship program there. And on a personal note, she is an extremely warm and kind-hearted person and an excellent teacher. With that, can I please call on Dr. Sahu to install Prof. Anshu, the chairman of the Singapore Council of Health. I install Dr. Ansu as the chairman of ISS, ISMS ICS chapter Singapore. Welcome, Dr. Thank Ansu. you. Thank you, Dr. Sahu. Thank you very much. <laughs> Prof. Long is a senior consultant pediatric ophthalmic and strabismus surgeon. He presides over numerous prestigious councils such as patient care safety and quality assurance. He is an active member of the Global Advisory Board of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus. Uh, I would kindly like to ask Dr. Boramani to install Prof. Long as the president of the Singapore chapter of ISMS Yeah, I am very glad and declare that Professor Kaur Long has been installed as the president of the Singapore chapter of ISMS ICS. Uh, Dr. Zuli is the deputy head of department of the SNEC Eye Clinic at CGH. She is a consultant in the glaucoma services as well as a clinical lecturer in the YLL School of Medicine. Uh, I would request Dr. Gokte to kindly install Dr. Zuli as the vice president of the Singapore chapter of ISMS ICS. Yeah. I installed Dr. Yap Zuli as the Vice President of ISMS ICS Singapore Chapter. Welcome, Dr. Yap. Thanks very much. Uh, Dr. Singhal is a clinician scientist at SERI and a consultant in the Neuro-Ophthalmology Services at SNEC. She has a PhD to her credit as well as numerous gold medals. Uh, I would request Dr. Satanshu Mathur to kindly install Dr. Shweta Singhal as the secretary of the Singapore chapter of ISMSIC. Welcome, Dr. Shweta. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure and a privilege to be joining. Pleasure to invite you as secretary, Singapore chapter of ISMSIC. Welcome you. Thank you very much, Dr. Satanshu. Prof. Shamira is a senior consultant in the glaucoma services at SNEC, as well as the head of department of the complex cataract and anterior segment surgery department. He is the program director for the SNEC residency program as well. He is a highly skilled surgeon and it is our honor to have him on this committee. Uh, Dr. B. K. Nayak, could you kindly install Prof. Shamira as the joint secretary of the Singapore chapter of ISMS ICS? Dr. Bikinai. Yeah, yeah, welcome. Welcome. Uh, sorry, it was, I was muted. Uh, welcome, Professor Samira Pereira uh, as the Joint Secretary of this society. And I congratulate you on taking over this post. Thank you very much I'm for the sure opportunity. The entire team will be really fantastic. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. I look forward to working with everybody. Uh, Dr. Ranshu, could you kindly install the members of your scientific committee and then uh, possibly say a few words? Okay, hi. Um, a very good evening to everybody, uh, especially a big thank you to Dr. Amulya Sahu, Dr. Boramani, um, Dr. Nilot Panna, and all the entire ISS, MSICS team uh, for working uh, closely with me over the last several weeks uh, to come to this day today to install the chapter in Singapore. Uh, it's a privilege to be part of this internationally acclaimed team of SICS surgeons. 
uh, in SNEC, um, SICS is done by a few surgeons, but we hope to take it forward in a big way um, and be able to make it part of the residency curriculum. And all those faculty who are interested to learn SICS uh, will be able to do so with your guidance and training. So I would like to introduce all the members of the scientific committee. Can you go back to the previous slide? So we have Dr. Uh, Tan Pengi, who is one of the consultants and an excellent cataract surgeon and who does a lot of complex cataract and anterior surgeon <laughs> work into the team. Uh, I would also like to welcome Dr. Melissa Wong, who is the associate program director of the residency program in SNEC and is also a senior consultant in the cataract service in SNEC. Um, Dr. Zaina, uh, who is also a senior consultant with the cataract and comprehensive department and also one of the associate program directors for the residency program in ophthalmology. Uh, they are, this, these Melissa and Dr. Zaina are very key because these are the people who train the residents and I'm hoping that with this collaboration, we will definitely be able to include SICS into our curriculum in the near future. Dr. Ellen Fong, who is the head of the department of Cater and Comprehensive Depa uh, the Service in SNEC, who is also a senior consultant, and we definitely need his support uh, to take this forward. Next, please. Um, Associate Professor Marta Sang, I'm sure many of you know him. Uh, he is currently the head of the cornea service in the Singapore National Eye Center, a big advocate of SICS himself, and he's, he has volunteered in several mission trips abroad where he's been doing SICS himself and has trained many of our doctors in SNEC. So I welcome him as well into the scientific committee. Dr. Wesley Chong, um, who has actually gone to India to train in SICS, an excellent surgeon, a part of the Catter and Comprehensive Department. Um, I welcome him as well on board. He's already started training uh, some of our residents in the SICS uh, surgery already. Dr. Ang Surey, whom also I'm sure some of you know, he is an excellent surgeon. He's a consultant at the in the glaucoma service at SNEC, has joined on several voluntary mission trips, has done several cases of SICS, and I hope to have him uh, as an active member who can train our interested faculty as well as our residents moving forward. So welcome, Surrey. Dr. Q, I, I'm not sure if she's here today, but she's currently abroad on a fellowship training. And she is another consultant from the glaucoma department who has a keen interest in SICS and who went to train under Dr. Shiva in Sambalpur to learn SICS herself so that she could come back and impart the same to our trainees here. So welcome everybody on board as members of the scientific committee. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anshu. Thank you, everyone, and congratulations. Uh, so with that, we conclude the installation part of the program. Uh, Dr. Nilotkarna will be conducting the CME. Uh, so good evening once again to everyone. And first and foremost, I would like to congratulate the entire team of uh, the Singapore chapter of ISMSAIS. Uh, congratulations, Anshu, ma'am, and the entire team. Welcome on board to ISMSAIS. So uh, after we have finished the ceremonial function, I would like to uh, introduce to uh, you, you to the advanced MSICS techniques and also how SICS has grown in the periphery and how this uh, cataract blindness has been dealt by most surgeons in India. So with that, we would like to emphasize on the point that training and teaching program cannot be underrated because SICS is a talent-based and a skill-based surgery, which every surgeon needs to know. In this regard, I would like to invite Dr. Kimaya Chavan, who is uh, our SICS NFAPO trainer at Alliance NFH Hospital in Miraj. She is one of the leading uh, trainers uh, associated with Help Me See. So over to you, Kimaya, ma'am. Uh, I would like you to share your uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Nilparna. I will share my presentation directly now. Okay. Is my slides visible? Presentation is visible to you? Um, yes, yes. yes, yes, yeah. So, uh, welcome all, and I'll be talking about the M6 training on surgical simulator. So, basically, why we need surgical simulator training, right? So, in traditional training, as we know, in COVID era, we had too many problems because there were hardly few patients for hands on experience. 
the randomized teaching is there. We have a long learning curve in traditional training. Also, there is a performance pressure when we are operating on the live surgery. Also, risk of permanent loss if the student is not very good in surgical training. And uh, in training with the course I, we have a tissue availability issue. And of course, uh, there's different of tissue feed. Okay. So how the Help Me See simulator a great help to us? Basically, this simulator is the only simulator which has a tactile feedback. It has high fidelity and 3D virtual reality. So this is how basically the simulator looks like. It is just like a microscope with the eyepieces, which you can adjust the IPD with and uh, your refractive error also. It has a desktop attached to that. So these are the two hand pieces are also called as haptics. And the surgeon here is uh, pressing on the wings. If the black part is the wings. When we press the wings, it is just like we are holding the eye with the colibri. So when you want to hold something, we press the wings and get a hold on the eye. And you can really feel the eye, the sclera, the limbus, everything. It's actually amazing technique. So this is desktop. With the desktop, we can actually uh, select particular step you want to operate on. And accordingly, you can select the instruments to operate the particular step. So in Help Me See, uh, in Mumbai, we are actually having these four modules and we teach accordingly. Every day we have one module taught to the students. So first, I'd like directly to go to a video where uh, it will show you how exactly we perform a particular step uh, with the simulator. So here, uh, you can see on the left hand, right hand side, the surgeon with the uh, holding the instrument, the haptics are behaving the same way what we select on the desktop. So if, if I want to uh, operate this on megatacellular tunnel, I can use or select 3 cent as an instrument with the use of desktop. And then in the left hand, I have selected Colibri as my instrument and right hand, I have selected 3 cent. So like this, you can make a sterile groove. The feel is exactly Similar, similar as a live surgery, at least 99% you can have the tactile sensation same as your eye. So now I'm making the tunnel. You can feel the corneal tissue. You can have the tension, what you exactly the anterior roof can give you. Like this, I have made the tunnel. And now I'm going to change my instruments while going on a desktop. So now I have selected 15 degrees blade as an instrument in my left hand and right hand I have selected colibri. So now I'm making a paracentesis there. When you enter the cornea, the same uh, feeling you can get when you are entering in the live eye. Now this is, I'm putting now viscoelastic inside the eye by selecting the visco syringe in the left eye. You can feel that corneal tissue by seeing how much uh, tension is inside the eye. Now here I am doing keratome entry now. We are selecting the keratome as an instrument and my entry is over. So now we will just see it will our capture axis. Here I have selected cystitome as instrument in my right hand. Now I am going to have the cut on the capsule. The capsular feel is exactly the same and it's actually unbelievable. And I have made a, a different C shape, reverse C, and I have actually made a flap. The same way how we teach in live surgery, we are actually having one clock hour moment of the capsule. And the same moment is repeated and the CCC is over. It's a great tool to teach students how to exactly you know proceed with the ccc because that is the most difficult step as per the trainees are they tell us for the novice surgeon this is a challenge to make so if you have a complication like here there's a tear run out so you can see on that desktop that you have a tear run out and surgical complication occurs so the instruments will turn red so students, they have to again go again there on desktop and uh, press the button of reattempt. So like this, we have a performance parameter on desktop where you can exactly see where you have gone wrong. So students can go back and you know see exactly where they are going wrong and where they have to work hard and to do what exactly so that they will have a satisfactory attempt. Now the same way we are doing hydroprolapse now. So here I've selected saline syringe as an instrument in my right hand. 
I'm going underneath the CCC margin. You can feel it and you can, when you inject it, the lens will tilt. So this is hydrodissection. Now I'm using Sinsky and I'll be getting the nucleus in the anterior chamber. Believe me, it's the same feel you get as if you are touching the real lens inside the eye. So it's very easy for us to exactly teach the students where, what exactly the way they have to move their hands, how they have to go at the equator and get the cataract out. So even easy for trainers without any tension because whenever they're operating on light, we are also tensed. If they make any mistake, we have to handle it, right? So there are performance parameters after every step, what they do. Now we'll see nucleus delivery, how beautifully it is seen. Go with the vectis inside. Unless you give counter pressure with colibri at six o'clock, the lens will not come, same as in light surgery. So we have to give pressure and then posting, uh, just given pressure on the floor of the tunnel, the lens is out. Same way with Simco, we are teaching the cortex removal. Uh, you can see the red dot up where the in the upper screen. Whenever your uh, the uh, wherever your simco is, the dot will be showing there. So if you have any complication, if you are aspiring the capsular aspiration, it is seen on the screen that you are going wrong. You have to again adjust accordingly and start aspirating. So here we are seeing all the uh, possible complications while operating. Like this, we are putting the intraocular lens now. You can beautifully see that the leading haptic is going under the CCC margin. And now we'll be dialing the lens with the help of Sinsky. We are constantly changing the instruments with the help of desktop. And now it will be beautifully placed under the CCC margin. And you have to, you know, you have to do it to believe it. It's absolutely fantastic tool to teach. So definitely you must have seen now the advantages of simulation training. Are, there are many advantages. Like you have to handle the instruments in a proper way. The students can learn themselves. You can definitely practice repeatedly till you get proficient in particular step. Of course, that is very important. You can learn without stress. There is no trainer standing next to you and you are not actually harming the patient like that if you have any mistake. It's a process which is standardized process. You can start and pause the process in between, which you cannot do possibly in live surgery. You can introduce yourself some complications to see what exactly goes wrong if you have certain uh, you know, different way of operating. Of course, it helps to learn from your own mistakes. And there are objective measurements because we have a performance data at the end of every uh, step. So the student can go and see where he's going wrong and how many satisfactory or unsatisfactory attempts the students had in particular session. And of course, you can review all your attempts. Uh, there's a video review for your attempts. So in Help Me See in Mumbai, we have all this uh, things available. We first give the ebook for the students for ebook study. Then we have classroom sessions. We tell them and teach them in detail uh, about the theoretical aspect of every practical procedure. There are lab activities on tomatoes, like you, have, you can make tunnel or uh, CCC practice on tomatoes. Then we have their uh, hands-on on simulators. And of course, after the session, we take debrief sessions as well, so that we can tell the students where they are going wrong, or if they have done well, you can praise them accordingly. So you have a scoring rate also, no? Yes, yes. We have a scoring rate also. You can get uh, directly the percentage of score the students has. So at uh, to start with, suppose the students are around 30% uh, rate. Then after some uh, one hour or so, we can again, uh, you know, compare that. And we can tell that uh, there is an improvement in particular uh, process or particular procedure. So then complication management, we have these complications, which are actually we are teaching now. Even they are ready with us now. These are our partners in India, where we have a satellite centers. These are our partners worldwide. And uh, in future developments, we are coming out with pediatric cataract management, open globe injury management, trabeculectomy, and suturing as well. 
So now we have this workshop in even the conference is coming up in uh, ESO Abu Dhabi 2023. And uh, there we are, we are going to have workshops and demonstrations with the use of simulator. So anyone interested can come and join us there for, for Dubai people and everywhere they are coming. They are welcome. Thank you so much Jeff, and for your enrollment. This is the contact number. Anyone can enroll here. And we can well, we, we are happy to uh, you know teach them on simulators. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to you know tell about simulators and help me see. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kimai ma'am. That was uh, really wonderful. It was uh, uh, it's a really uh, important uh, uh, upgrade uh, for the training program who have been doing the wet labs and now uh, upgrading up to simulator training. And with that, I would like to invite uh, our next speaker, Dr. Jagannath Boramani, sir, who will be speaking on customized uh, uh, sm uh, small incision cataract surgery and how we can uh, manage the astigmatism with that. Uh, Boramani, sir, may I uh, please request you to kindly share your slides? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and you can you can hear me also, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. Presentation we are not seeing, sir. Your screen is not seen. Presentation screen is not Presentation seen. Presentation is not seen, sir. Customized insulin cataract surgery? No. 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 And stop share and share. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you see now? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. So I am going to speak on customized insulin cataract surgery. This is about SICS surgery. Uh, let me start with two cases. This is a case which was having a minimal astigmatism. There was practically no astigmatism, only 0.13 diopter. I did SICS but didn't induce much, much astigmatism. So the astigmatism has remained same in spite of a big scleral tunnel incision. Let me show you another case wherein the astigmatism was very high. It was almost two diopters, but then I tried to neutralize it with SICS without doing FACO. And this almost came down to 0.43. So this is possible with scleral tunnel incisions. <clears throat> the scleral tunnel incisions are very secure. They heal very well and they are forgiving type of incisions. And the surgery also becomes economical because you don't need a FACO machine. What is the most important advantage of FACO over SICS? It is always said that it is less induced astigmatism. But is it true? Because all the cases, the published literature so far compared with a standard FACO with a standard 6 mm prone or a straight incision. But if you try to modify the incisions, you can definitely play with astigmatism. The principle is very simple. It is known that a straight 6 mm in, uh, incisions, scleral tunnel incision induces 1.25 to 1.5 diopters of astigmatism. This is the very reason we make it a little curved, prone type of incision. This is to bring the uh, ends of the incisions, take it away from the limbus, the induced astigmatism reduces. But what happens if you make the incision more and more curved? Try to make it more curved, definitely it will be less induced astigmatism. If you increase the curvature further, definitely the astigmatism will be less. So this is the principle I am using in my cases. So after doing so many cases, I have formulated my own algorithms. Like saying straight mm incision, if you bring down the size of the incision from 7 mm to say 5 mm, the induced astigmatism will come down from 1.16 to 0.82. Similarly, a curved incision also, if it is progressively made more and more curved, definitely it will induce less and less astigmatism. Temporarily, the incisions are little weaker or in inducing or neutralizing the astigmatism. So accordingly, you will formulate your own algorithms. The <coughs> curved temporal incisions are almost astigmatically neutral. The superior temporal and superior nasal, they behave in between the superior and temporal incisions. To have a perfect or very good results, try to keep your incision on the steep meridian. So suppose 140 is the steep meridian, whatever may be the shape and size of the incision, try to keep the center of the incision on that steep meridian so that the vector forces from both the sides are acting equally on both the sides. 
so you have to sit according to the steep astigmatism but fortunately in both the eyes you can always get this half circle as shown in the diagram wherein your center of the incision can be located and then there are so many uh, there are softwares available online so one type of incision you can put in one type of table and formulate how your incision is behaving in that particular meridian and you formulate your own algorithms so let me show you a few cases all the post op keratometries the topographies are done almost 20 days after the surgery now in this case the astigmatism was very small 0.28 so i had a, i had a u shaped incision this way and i further brought it down to 0.18 this is another case, superotemporal, 0.39 has been brought, brought down to 0.22 with a comparatively less incision. Now, this is 1.12. So, for this type of astigmatism, which the steep axis 97, a straight incision about 6 mm will work better and it came down to 0.15. So, this way I can show you so many cases. Here, the astigmatism 1.62, steep axis 10. So, it has been brought down to 0.29. All these cases are scleral tunnel incisions. Now I'll show you two interesting cases wherein this is a very high astigmatism, 3.49. Patient couldn't afford a toric lens. So with the scleral tunnel incision only, I neutralized almost 2.98 diatrophs of astigmatism and patient landed with only 0.64. This was with a big straight incision on the steep axis. If I would have gone a little closer to the limbus, perhaps I could have neutralized that remaining part also. This is another affording patient with a very high astigmatism, but I operated without otoric lens and again substantially brought down his astigmatism. So with this, you can promote your surgery as a premium surgery with or premium IOH. So in the first case, I operated with the same charges. So it became a charity for the patient. Here I charge premium rate for the surgery without using a premium IOH. So instead of paying to the company, the patient can pay to the surgeon. Now, this is a case of a doctor in our town who wanted multifocal lens, but didn't want, I didn't put a toric lens. The steep axis was 170. On auto, it was showing 160. It was a left eye. I reduced it drastically without using a toric lens, only with the scleral tunnel incision. This is his incision. This is a slightly superior nasal in the left eye. And subjectively, he's not accepting anything. He's perfect 6, 6, and N5. This is only with scleral tunnel incision. Now, this is a case operated 20 years back, 20 days back only. This is a one diatrop astigmatism and the steep axis is 156 in the left eye. So I had to go superior nasally. And this is a topography done today in the morning. You can check the date. It is 19 January, today's day. And patient has now landed up only with 0.25 diatrops of astigmatism. So this is his superior nasal incision. So this way you can play with the astigmatism. So I hate this term surgically induced astigmatism. I should call it as a surgically corrected astigmatism because the upper term is unwanted pregnancy. Second term is like a planned child. So I stop calling my cases as SICS. It is a CICS, the customized incision cataract surgery. So to have a better result, you have to use the instruments which you use for a toric lens case. In a patient setting position, I mark the horizontal and vertical medium, that is 180 and 90. And then when the patient is lying down on the table, you mark the axis, the steep axis, whatever may be the size and shape of your incision. So these are two cases. This is a 39 meridian and the incision is a straight one. So I'm trying to keep the steep meridian at the center of the incision. Here it is a curved incision, but I'm trying to keep this mark in the center. So this way you can play with uh, astigmatism. This is my article published recently in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology on the customized incision cataract surgery. And Dr. Nilupar, I have what time? Now, let me show you two cases. Another advantage of this technique. Suppose you have two identical cases, exactly two diopters of astigmatism. Same axis is the steep one and you induce your st uh, same methodology, you apply your same methodology. But sometimes there can be surprises. Here you got under correction. You could neutralize only 1.5 diopters. So patient landed up with 0.5 diopters of end astigmatism. In the second case, maybe there is over correction. You are neutralizing 2.5 instead of 2. But the patient will land up again with 0.5 ter. So even if the range of error, suppose, is 1 diopter, your end result or the astigmatism will be half of the, that, half of that uh, range of error. Only the meridians get interchanged. 
So this is another advantage of this technique. So with customized incisional tunnel engineering, it is very possible to wipe out the, or at least minimize the stigma of astigmatism. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much, sir, for giving us an insight into the customized incisions in small incision cataract surgery. And without wasting uh, your time, I would like to share my uh, experience with small incision cataract surgery. So I'm going to talk about uh, Dr. Sahu's uh, technique of small incision cataract surgery. Is my slide visible? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. I hope it is visible now. Yes. Yes, Nirvana. Yes. So I'm going into slide mode now. It is visible. So today I'm going to talk about the morphometry of uh, Dr. Sahu's incision for advanced MSICS. My gratitude to Sahu sir for teaching me this technique and uh, Dr. Harsha sir for mentoring me throughout my ophthalmology career. So we have already come across why we need a small incision cataract surgery and how it has um, progressed through the, uh, uh, through the decades. And uh, most of the modifications has been either related to the incision or the method of nucleus delivery. And herein, I would like to, uh, uh, sorry. So herein, I would like to uh, tell you something about the modifications in the incision parameters, as well as uh, the preco-fragmentation of the lens in the back, as well as in the uh, anterior chamber. So these are some of the modified instruments. Uh, to note, you can see the multi-jet cannula for the tunnel and AC cleaning. We also have the single jet cannula for hydro dissection as well as endothelium cleaning. And most importantly, we have the vector suited 2.8 millimeter hanging edge, which is a very important tool for the surgical procedure. So Dr. Sahu's two millimeter frown incision with back cuts, wherein the steep axis is marked. This is Dr. Sahu's uh, uh, surgical uh, video where he has marked a two millimeter behind around 1.5 to two millimeter behind the limbus. And after placing the fronts, he has made 1.5 millimeter back cuts on both sides of the tunnel. So once you go into the sclerocorneal tunnel, you form the pockets and you can uh, actually go in around three millimeter into the uh, cornea, uh, corneal lip. So if you're planning for a foldable IOL, you can easily introduce your foldable injector through this three millimeter entry into the AC. Uh, and uh, Dr. Sahu is using Khan's uh, chopper for uh, fragmenting it in the back. It is a very soft nucleus, usually LOCS three classification of up to grade two is very good for this type of surgery, but you can also go ahead with LOCS grade three for this surgery. So you can see you can uh, easily deliver it in this uh, nucleus through this tunnel. Now moving ahead, we try to see where, if we can modify this uh, Sahu's uh, incision for introduction of the PMMA IOL, wherein after placing the two millimeter incision, I have just uh, placed my crescent blade into the uh, 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 corneal lip and I have placed the uh, back cuts. Here the back cuts are up to, a millim uh, up to two millimeters so that I can create a hypotenuse diagonally of around 3.9 millimeter so that I can introduce a 5.5 millimeter PMMA IOL. Now here, I will not be bisecting the nucleus in the back, but I will be using the vectis as my support and cracking the nucleus with the visco cannula and continuously irrigating with the visco elastic. So the ease of uh, delivering this uh, bisected nucleus is because of the trampoline-like bed that is created. So you can now see, you can actually put in a 5.5 millimeter optic sized PMMA IOL in the back with these. So uh, this is our um, uh, 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 paper which we published for the early post-operative astigmatism in two millimeter MSICS with Pecopector, wherein we found out that the keratometric difference between the steepest and the flattest meridian actually changed from a mean of 0.8 to 1.39 diopter. So in real time, if you see the spherical mean spherical equivalent on the autoref measured an estimatic error of marginally 0.5 from 0.4. Therefore, you have all actually changed the mean astigmatism of only 0.1 cylinder. So this is a patient wherein I have done two millimeter on the right eye and a six millimeter on the left eye. 
after taking full consent from the patient. And you see uh, here the cylindrical power is 0.35 at 54 or, uh, degrees. And I have actually induced uh, 1 point, 0 0.14 diopter cylinder postoperatively with 0 0.4 at 66 degree. Whereas in the six millimeter, my SIA has actually in, increased to one, uh, one diopter of cylinder. From 0 0.5, I have gone to 1.4 uh, diopters of cylinder. So the surgically induced difference of about half a diopter when a pairwise correlation was made. This patient, if you see the error with the rule astigmatism of 0.76 could be actually ignored after surgery to zero. So it becomes nil postoperatively if you can use this two millimeter with the back cut incisions. However, with a six millimeter incision, even a 0.43 or a negligible uh, uh, astigmatism can induce a 1.26 diopter of uh, cylinder postoperatively. So uh, considering that we can also crack the nucleus in the AC, we try to look at the endothelial count of these uh, patients and we see that the CV ratio and the hexagonality is quite good compared to both the two millimeter as well as the six millimeter. So now we try to see whether this same results can be uh, extrapolated uh, in two millimeter as well as in the FACO uh, uh, the FACO machine. So we saw that it is almost similar and it gives absolutely good results. So you see an uh, two millimeter cylinder of 0.4 in this 1.4, when I'm using a PMM med and uh, in the FACO it points point, from 0.73 to 0.4. So you see that uh, both uh, two millimeter and FACO incision can give you good results postoperatively. And considering the wound integrity, we have used a SOCT to see whether the wound integrity was intact postoperatively. And we have seen it is a clean wound which could not be distinguished postoperatively at six weeks. So, and definitely, as this is a very small incision, we had our learning curve. And you can have, if uh, the uh, tunnel is not uh, quite well made, then you can have and the iris prolapse from the superior end of the tunnel, or you can also injure the endothelium while bisecting the nucleus, you can have corneal, uh, causing corneal edema postoperatively. Since it is a very small tunnel, and if you have not made the uh, uh, back cuts, you can actually de-roof the uh, tunnel. And uh, if the viscoelastics are not continuously uh, injected while, the, uh, while bisecting the nucleus in the AC, you can end up with a PC rent. So I would like to show you what can go wrong if you are not uh, in the, uh, if you are not uh, giving the back cuts because while if you don't do that you tend to increase the uh, width of the tunnel up to three millimeter and you actually create a non compressible tunnel. So when you are uh, trying to bring in the nucleus uh, uh, through the small tunnel you are actually dragging them uh, through the small incision and causing. Compress, uh, compression and bursting effect on the tunnel. So actually this uh, causes a very bad uh, post-operative uh, wound integrity as well as creates more astigmatism. So the wound ergonomics is that you, if you want to go ahead with a PMMA IOL, you create a six millimeter corneal tunnel, but you keep your scleral tunnel to two millimeter and a back cut of around 1.5 to two millimeter so that you get good uh, scleral pockets to introduce your 5.5 PMMA IOL but do not create a trapezoidal uh, sort of a tunnel in this situation, because if you don't give the back cuts, then you are going to create a poisoning effect. So Sahu's technique of micro incision is actually a refinement of the incision, limiting the size and causing estimatic neutrality. Uh, the visco fragmentation is uh, safer for corneal endothelium, as you have seen with our results. Foldable as well as rigid IOL implantation is possible through, through this wound architecture. It is cost effective than FACO, has got less carbon footprint and definitely reproducible if learned properly. The, there are gratifying surgical outcomes for the patients. And with that, I would like to say that SICS is actually creativity, which can see the same thing, but think differently. I have, I'm quoting Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam in this sense. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. And these are my references. Uh, so, uh, moving on to the uh, next topic, we have with us Dr. Shiva Prasad Sahu, who needs no introduction. He is very well known to uh, the ophthalmologist in Singapore and US because uh, his uh, institute, the Trilocean Netralaya at Sambalpur, has been giving uh, training and teaching programs to most of the ophthalmologists across the country and across the world. And uh, I would request Dr. Sahu to uh, share his slides where he would be giving an insight about uh, ophthalmologists who are doing a great work in curing blind, uh, preventable blindness across India. Sir, uh, uh, kindly share your slides. 
then unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yep. Yes, yes. Good evening. Very happy to see many known faces and uh, most, uh, I just counted the office bears number, more than half of them have been to uh, Trilots and Netrala Sambalpur uh, for on mission trips. And most of them uh, have operated on many cases here uh, using SICS. And I'll be talking on the same scenario, why uh, SICS manual small and cutter is important in peripheral centers. All of us know uh, this famous uh, uh, quote, all well that ends well. And it also stands correct for all surgeons from beginner to experts. And uh, before we think of uh, going for any surgery in a peripheral center with limited resources and limited uh, uh, manpower and skill, uh, just look at this type of cataracts, what we usually get in uh, peripheral centers. Uh, and I have heard uh, these cases are also not very new in Singapore also. In their say, peripheral centers also, they also do get similar cataracts, which are present very late, very high, uh, advanced cataracts, but still they have to operate. I'll just have a, a small video how to uh, how you have to uh, go for a very hard high dense cataract uh, using a scleral tunnel from the temporal approach but still the post op outcome is excellent this is just a, 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 a very a conventional surgery uh, straight incision from the temporal aspect may a regular 6 mm incision and uh, uh, we prefer this in very old cases just to reduce the uh, against the astigmatism, which is very uh, common in uh, oldest patients. A 6 mm uh, incision and all the rest uh, surgical steps are uh, very uh, familiar with uh, all of us. A yeah, uh, uh, quite good size uh, uh, capsular axis and a hydro dissection, prolapsing the nucleus into the anterior chamber using hydrocanula and protecting the nucleus with uh, ample amount of uh, viscoelastic substances and taking out the nucleus, putting a regular PMMA lens. Very safe and quite fast surgery. And the patients, I'm just showing this uh, with a block, but many surgeries can also be done uh, using the same technique, but with no anesthesia, topical, with only topical anesthesia. So the point I'm uh, trying to stress is in peripheral centers where this type of cataract are, are usual presentations. What techniques should we uh, uh, adopt? And we also get a similar result, which is just similar to the techniques, which is uh, already demonstrated by Ramulya Sausar, Varamani Sar, Nirat Padma, Parna. Uh, so the, and at the end of the day, when the patient is happy, Technique is also quite safe and, and it's encouraging to learn and practice. So, it, real challenges in peripheral centers is the it's lack of patient awareness, and most of the patients land up to the surgeon in a very late, very hard cataract, grade four, hypermature, Morgan Lang stage. And some of the patients also we have seen the nucleus is so uh, small, it has gone into percolating the posterior capsule and gone into the vitreous. So these neglected cataracts are the real challenges in the peripheral centers. And to do a good job, the SICS technique is very safe. Also, the, though this is a learning curve, which is a little bit longer than the uh, regular FECO surgery, but the outcome is always good. FECO skill set in uh, peripheral uh, centers uh, big, uh, and limited to these centers are <coughs> this lack of very, very skilled, high-skilled high FECO surgeons. So the outcome on the advanced cataract and very hard cataract is always compromised. Operation theater setups are also 
not in very good shape, just like in very bigger towns, and lack of higher end FECO machines, lack of consumables, along with once combined with the less skill set of the surgeon, also makes outcome very miserable. Poster segment complications will all, are also very common when you try with limited skill set and with low power, so low uh, um, uh, grade FECO machines. And when poster compressions happen, the patients are very difficult to refer to higher centers. And because of their lack of means awareness and the cost factor involved, then the ultimate uh, outcome, post of outcome, is also not very good. Anterior segment complications are also very high when done in less skilled hand. And if we do a fair, um, um, a fair number of FECO in this uh, very dense cataracts, the cornea is also compromised, and in peripheral sectors, uh, setups, uh, there is also lack of corneal facility to repair the cornea to do this, 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 so just to avoid them, better not to do complications and to adopt a safe technique. So a manual small incident cataract surgery in a very hard cataract, in very unsafe and very elderly patients is very safe and is always a better uh, choice for patient safety. The safe, easier, but with a bit longer learning curve. Also, manual small incision cataract surgery, uh, as already uh, told by Amulya sir, is very cost effective and efficient technique also. The ultimate outcome uh, is determined how the outcome is also achieved. If the cost involvement is very less and uh, technique is safe, so obviously, it's a win-win situation both for the surgeon as well as the for the, for, for the patient. So uh, obviously, cataracts, um, uh, dense cataract done through manual small cell cataract surgery is always a better alternative to faculty multiplication and also this conventional extra capsular cataract incision where we put a lot of sutures. Uh, and this is already proved. This is a routine is in routine cases. Just shown by Bora Manisa is a very safe and the challenging cases is also very safe. So only factor which is negative in uh, small incident cataract surgery is a little bit uh, longer learning curve. So with this, I thank you and welcome all of you to this wonderful uh, club, ISMSICS. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shiva Sahu sir, for your enlightening talk and you have shown the ground reality in countries like India. And uh, with that, uh, we come to the uh, academic part of uh, this program. And I would like to request uh, Anshu ma'am and her team, if uh, you would like to ask any questions regarding the SMSS chapter or regarding anything about SICS. Ma'am, your questions are welcome. I think it's, it's enlightening to see how SICS has evolved over time. I mean, we are still starting off. We will definitely start off with a six mm, maybe six to seven mm SICS uh, surgery, and then hope that's an aspiration for us to go to two mm one day with the help of Dr. Sahu, who has actually, you know, spent a lot of time uh, spreading the word around about the importance of doing a two mm SICS surgery. I'm sure it's technically more challenging, um, yes. and I also realize that in our eyes here in Singapore. Uh, routine SICS is also a lot more challenging uh, given the anatomy, the smaller we have the, the, the orbital, the space is limited, uh, there is greater vitreous pressure and so there are some, some things that we need to modify so that we can get a better outcome for our patients. Yeah. I think the simulator based training is something I'm really looking forward to because I think as a start for our residents or as even for interested faculty to get the simulator here in SNEC as, a, as, as part of the training will really enhance our ability to do SICS. So that, that would be the first step that I'm looking forward to working on. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, sure ma'am. Thank you. Give a lot of thanks. Any, any, any questions question? from your team? Yes, any questions from anyone? Dr. Allen, Dr. Um, Melissa, Dr. Zoo, Dr. Marcus is also here. Yeah. 
we request everyone to start the video so that we can have a nice snap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am actually driving now. Just now I was oh, okay. now, yeah. So I, I think a quick word from me was I'm trying to focus on the road. So um I, I uh I'm very happy and delighted that uh uh Singapore can join as a chapter uh in your great organization and your videos that you show and the simulator is fantastic, really very good. And uh thanks for making the effort to share with us the videos and the presentation just now. I mean it certainly set the stage. So um, I'm, and thanks for uh, letting our faculty join uh, this uh, organization and together I think we can collaborate. And certainly I also echo uh, Dr. Anshu's um, this, um, wait, I'm trying to concentrate. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me organize my thoughts. Okay, so the, I would like to echo what Dr. Anshu said uh, regarding the, um, the simulator, uh, if we can get the simulator over, I think that will really speed up the process. Uh, that, may I know that simulator is uh, locally um, jet, um, created by your faculty or which institution is it? Because uh, there are so many um, people involved, right? I'm sure it's not so easy to come up with that simulator. Ma'am, can answer the question. Yes, it is simulator is uh, we have we made it in France and the company named uh, Help Me See is basically in USA, and uh, ah. it's basically a non-governmental NGO and a non-profit organization. The simulators are made in France, but now uh, Mrs. Saro is the CEO of this, and he will be you know you can uh, have a talk with him, and uh, we can provide a simulator to your place. Ah, okay, I see, I see. Great. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks for having us. And uh, I'm sure we look forward to great things uh, together. Uh, and thanks for all the support you have give, given to Dr. Anshu and uh, our team. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, perhaps uh, some of my colleagues may want to add to what I've just said. Was I concentrate on the road? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Drive safe. Uh, anyone else would like to uh, add something? Dr. Melissa, Dr. Tan, Dr. Zuli. Um, if I may, um, yeah. I'll just um, quickly. Oh, add yeah, Dr. Shweta, I, I just asked. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's been so wonderful this entire session, not just meeting. The, the team that founded your chapter to begin with, founded this whole institution to begin with, uh, but also seeing how you've taken this very simple surgery to such heights in terms of customization and, um, you know, really kind of achieving the, the kind of refractive outcomes that, that people achieve with machines and instruments, um, you know, with, with just pure surgical skills. So that was really impressive to watch. And I hope that we can eventually get there right now now we are <clears throat> sort of just very baby steps uh, trying to, you know, pick the right cases to begin with. You know, a lot of our cases, like Dr. Sahu was saying, um, although we are in Singapore, they do seem to be like the peripheral center cases, um, very, very dense. And we, we tend to offer SICS to these patients also because most other cases get offered FACOs in our center. And uh, we can't quite, you know, justify doing SICS just yet because it's a new procedure for us. Um, but uh, the, the difference in the outcomes uh, when we pick the right cases and uh, the way they look the next day compared to if they'd had a FACO and we had struggled through trying to get rid of that dense cataract. Um, I, I, it makes us feel like this is definitely the way forward for, for the dense cataracts that we see. And I hope to learn from all of you a lot more. Right now we're still doing six millimeter and we are struggling with that. So to get to <laughs> your very nice two millimeter with the back cuts, that would be the dream. So Thank you so much. I, 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 think, I think the, the secretary, you are going to do a great job. You are a very keen student, looks, and uh, I think uh, we are looking forward to a lot of interaction with SNE. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So sure. I'm, I'm telling also to start a, a big conference there. So let us uh, draw attention to that, you know. So yeah. Yeah. once we create an atmosphere, everybody will be in line to learn. 
So nice. Indeed. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, with that, we have uh, come to an end of uh, this installation ceremony. And uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, the entire team of SNEC who has come forward to join us at ISMSCIS with yet another international chapter. I would uh, like to thank everyone, each and everyone, our founder chairman, Dr. Amalya Sahu, sir, Dr. Boramani, sir, Dr. Parikshit, sir, Dr. Uh, Satangshu Mathur, sir, Dr. Deepak Mishra, Dr. Arti Heda. We have with us Dr. Kimaya Chavan, ma'am, Dr. Shiva Prasad Sahu, Dr. Manik Nicholson, who has worked together for this program. And I thank Dr. Anshu, Dr. Shweta, Dr. Rosman, Dr. Melissa Wong, Dr. Tanpe, Dr. Zuli, Dr. Allen, Dr. Um, Marcus, and all the members of the scientific committee for giving us uh, this opportunity to collaborate with you all. And we look forward to uh, more and more collaborations, both in terms of scientific and as well as uh, skill transfer knowledge in the near future. And uh, I hope this has been very fruitful. At the end, uh, I would also like to thank our technical partners and Todd Pharmaceuticals for helping us uh, with this, uh, uh, with the Zoom link and all this uh, live uh, uh, streaming of uh, this session. If I have left out anybody, I would like to apologize on that part. I have with me my mentor, Dr. Harsha sir, who has taken out time for this uh, program and he is extremely happy to have you all here in Assam as well in the near future. So uh, I would now request the uh, Antot team to kindly, if you want, uh, to play your video. By the way, Dr. Bhasa is the uh, International Governing Council Chairman. So yes, shortly we, there we will be at, uh, you know, taking two people from each chapter and we'll be shortly uh, convening a meeting of the Governing Council so that we are planning in 2005 uh, a USA conference. So uh, Singapore can also help us in uh, getting the right people to do that. So once that is, uh, we have done that, then we will be uh, having the conferences in the line of uh, ICO, that is a world conference, and then the state can bid for it and go for it. So, so that kind of things, and we'll be interacting a lot in this uh, governing council meeting the rules, regulations, uh, and uh, paths to follow. So Sweta and Anshu and gear up uh, for the conference and uh, come with some ideas and uh, suggestions for ongoing process, okay? Jagannath, sure. you would like to tell something? Yes, surely we will. I I'm mm -hmm. looking, I'm really looking forward to working with you. Yes, and your team, yes. Yeah, the Western world as well as the Southeast Asia and the whole world is now looking towards SICS because of the advanced techniques which are giving equivalent or sometimes better results. So I think everyone, and it is always a good uh, tool for a FECO surgeon for any difficult cases because there are many countries wherein for hard cataract straight pay they start do ECCA and suturing. So they also want to learn SICS at least for those cases. But once you become a master in SICS, perhaps you will do all, all cases with SICS only. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah. Mr. Kushbara, I think uh, you can play your video. With that, we come to an end of this program. And uh, good night and uh, have a great weekend, all of you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Nilu, for Thank you. and uh, uh, Dr. Manek. Manek for doing a great job. Yeah. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Ansu.